LiPos are amazing batteries, offering huge amounts of power for their size and weight, making them perfect for the RC hobby, and they all need to be charged. That's why today we're gonna talk about some tips for LiPo charging to hopefully help you out, keep those LiPos lasting longer, and to help you charge more safely. LiPo batteries are so widespread, it's common to see them used as transmitter batteries, receiver batteries for nitro vehicles, and then for a lot of other applications. Most of these tips that we're gonna talk about today apply to primary LiPo batteries that you would use to power your vehicle, aircraft, or boat. Although some of these tips will apply to those smaller batteries that you would use in secondary applications. So to start this off, we'll begin with some more basic tips and then we'll work our way up. Now our first tip is just to use charge bands to help you stay organized. Now everyone has a different system they like to use. I like to use these bands when I've got a bunch of batteries to charge up, I'll just slide it over the battery and that way I can visually see once the batteries are pushed aside, which ones are charged up and which aren't. Now these particular bands are just 10 scale on-road tire glue bands. They're inexpensive, they're easy to use, and they're easy to keep a track of. Those wide, heavy-duty rubber bands will also do the job. The idea here is to just have a visual cue so you can quickly and easily determine which batteries are charged and which are not. Now tip number seven deals with battery charging safety, and it's the most important thing you can do when you charge your LiPos up, and that's to use a bat safe charge box. It's very rare for there to be a LiPo fire and it can happen for a variety of different reasons. But although it's very rare, it can still happen. So LiPo charging safety is really a primary concern. Now there are a lot of different methods to protecting yourself when you charge up. We've probably all seen the charge bags that are out there. There are tons of them available in different colors and sizes. And these charge bags are just okay, but they're nowhere near the best solution. Instead, the very best thing that you can do for yourself when charging your LiPo batteries is to be using one of these charge, uh, bat safe charge boxes. Now using it is super simple. You're gonna put your battery inside the box. You're gonna run your charge leads through that little rubber slot so you can plug it into your battery. And then on the other end, on the outside of the box will be your charger. Then you latch up the box and you charge your battery. Now with these boxes, they have all the different vent holes on the very top lid of the box. This is to allow the compromised battery to ventilate because under during a fire, there's gonna be a lot of pressure built up and it needs to vent out in order for the box to stay securely shut. Now, some guys use ammo boxes to store their LiPos in, which is all right, but if there is a fire inside that ammo box, it's not ventilated and that box will get red hot burning anything underneath that ammo box. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's why the bat safe is the ultimate method to safely charge your LiPo batteries. And then when you're done with the LiPos, you can store the LiPos inside the box. Tip number six is a great habit to develop and it's a great way to keep your batteries healthy. And it's to balance charge your LiPo batteries every time you charge them. The most obvious benefit to balance charging a battery every time is that the cells stay balanced, the battery stays healthier, and you minimize any fire risk. The other benefit is that it cuts down on the charge time because it minimizes the amount of time your charger has to spend rebalancing those cells because they're already balanced. Some guys only balance charge their batteries once in a while, which leads to the cells becoming unbalanced. So the next time that they actually balance charge, that charge process is gonna take a long time because the charger now has to rebalance those cells at a really slow charge rate. And the more unbalanced those cells are, the longer it's ultimately gonna take to rebalance them. So if you just keep your cells balanced all the time, not only is it smart and safe, but it will minimize how long it takes to complete that balanced charge process. To go along with balanced charging, our next tip is to monitor your cell voltages when you charge. On a traditional four button charger, one of those buttons will bring up the individual cell voltage display where it will show each cell voltage. When I charge, I'll just leave it on this screen so I can at any time take a peek at what those cell voltages are to make sure that everything is fine and that there are no issues. Because if there are any cell issues, they'll present themselves 
right here. For Traxxas users, if you have one of the live chargers, you can actually download and install the EasyPeak live app on an Android or iOS device, and then pair that to your charger to see what your cell voltages are. It's a really nice app to use. Now our tip number four is a simple and safe one, and that's to just storage charge your batteries when you're done using them at the end of the day. Now, why would you do this? Well, there are a few benefits. For one, it's better for the long-term health and performance of your battery to be storage charging it. Now, the optimal cell voltage for a LiPo battery is about 3.7 and 3.8 volts, but chances are when you use that battery in your vehicle, the vehicle actually drains the battery beyond that voltage. Let's say, for example, the ESC in your vehicle cuts off the LiPo battery at 3.2 volts. Now that voltage is fine and dandy, but if you're done using your LiPo and you will not be using it for a while, 3.2 volts is not a great voltage to be storing your battery at. By putting that battery on your charger on the storage mode, the charger will actually charge your battery up a little bit to the 3.7 and 3.8 volt range. Then the second benefit to storage charging a battery every time is that it's going to reduce the time it takes to charge that battery once you're ready to use it. And this is because you've already slightly charged the battery up to that optimal storage range. It had you just left the battery after using it last time, it would still be down at those lower voltages like 3.2 volts, for example. So that means it's now going to take more time Put that extra energy back in your battery to get it fully charged. So using that storage mode will help your battery stay at healthy voltages, which is beneficial for the long-term health and performance of the pack, and it also cuts down on the charge times needed next time you want to use the battery. Tip number three is one of my favorites, and it's to use the save profile memory of your charger if it has that function. Now basically this allows you to save all the parameters like the cell count, the mock capacity, as well as the charge rate of your battery into the charger as a profile. This is especially useful for people who have a lot of different batteries or different battery types like us. We are using two cells, three cells, four cells, and six cells. So I've added profiles for both balanced charge and storage charge for our most commonly used LiPo batteries, and it saves a lot of time. Tip number two is a really simple tip to follow, and that basically is to let your battery cool down after you've used it before you charge it up again. LiPos get hot when you use them, and charging a hot LiPo will only make it hotter. Now heat can degrade the long-term performance of your battery, not to mention it can cause it to swell or puff up. So by letting your LiPo cool down after you use it before you charge it up again can really help extend the long-term life and performance of that LiPo. Our number one tip for you guys on LiPo battery charging is all about heat, and that is to always charge your LiPo battery at a 1C charge rate for the very best health and long-term performance of that LiPo battery. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a 1C charge rate is or what it all means, please go watch a YouTube video, go Google a couple of articles. But in summary, it has to deal with how many amps you're charging the LiPo battery at. Now, battery manufacturers will always provide the maximum charge rate rating for their LiPos. I have here a 4,600 milliamp battery. So a 1C charge rate is most common for batteries. For this 4,600 milliamp, that would be a 4.6 amp charge rate. Some batteries have a 2C charge rate. For this 4,600 milliamp battery, that would be a 9.2 amps. And a 2C charge rate would effectively charge the battery twice as fast as a 1C charge rate. Some LiPo batteries out there may have a really high maximum charge rate, like 10C. So for this 4,600 milliamp battery, that would be a charge rate of 46 amps, which is ridiculous. Now those really high charge rates are usually reserved for high quality race grade or competition battery packs. And this particular pack is actually capable of 10C. Now what nobody is telling you about these really high charge rates is that the higher the amperage you charge your battery at, the hotter the cells inside the battery get. It's essentially heating the battery from the inside out. And this really intense heat from these super high charge rates will effectively degrade the LiPo battery. 
Now, if you're a racer who buys new LiPo batteries every season, then, I mean, who really cares? This is why you never buy used LiPos. But if you're a basher, or you're somebody who wants their LiPo batteries to be lasting them years into the future, then charging at a 1C charge rate will help you achieve this. And as a note, never charge your LiPo batteries beyond the maximum charge rate that that battery manufacturer recommends. All right guys, I hope these charging tips were helpful for you. If you like this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and leave any questions or comments down below. I'm Brett from A-Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.